Hello and welcome to this special episode of Daily Debrief, where we go to Latin America and two vital electoral processes in Mexico and Guatemala. But before we go any further, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. In today's show, we take a look at two important elections, one that is already concluded and one that is scheduled for next year. We begin with the election to come in Mexico in June 2024. Now, the ruling progressive Morena party has decided its presidential candidate, Dr. Claudia Sheinbaum, the former head of government of Mexico City. An environmental scientist, a former student activist and a veteran politician, Sheinbaum will now seek to carry forward the legacy of the incumbent Andrea Manuel Lopez Obrador, AMLO, under whose administration the country has made some substantial gains. We have with us Zoe Text to understand more about these primaries. Well, it has been officially defined uh, that two women will be contesting uh, the presidency in Mexico in 2024. Uh, these are when the general elections will be held. Um, and on Wednesday, September 6th, Morena, which is the National Regeneration Movement, uh, the Morena Party, uh, defined who uh, its presidential candidate would be. Uh, this was defined through a month long internal consultation process, um, through rigorous uh, polling and consulting amongst the base of the party. Um, and there were four different pollsters used and all of them, uh, which the results were handed over on Wednesday and announced that Claudia Sheinbaum, Dr. Claudia Sheinbaum, uh, one of the founders of the Morena party and a protege of current president Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador would be the presidential candidate for this party. She was running against uh, five other contenders, including the former uh, foreign minister, Marcelo Ebrard, um, he, on the other hand, uh, has been, had been for the past several weeks kind of building up to a sort of intent uh, to say that there was fraud in the process. He had previously denounced publicly um, how the consultation was taking place, um, despite it being the product of a extensive agreement between all six of the candidates that were running for this candidacy um, on the day that the um, the ticket was announced, which was this past Wednesday, um, he declared on social media that he uh, that fraud had been taking place and that he was stepping out of the process. Um, then, of course, later that day, it was confirmed that Claudia Sheinbaum had uh, been picked as the favorite. She had got around forty percent in all of the polls that had been done, whereas Marcelo Ebrard polled behind her, which was already predicted in all of the prior polling that had been taken place by different news agencies and pollsters. He received about 25% uh, of the vote share, um, of course, disqualifying him from becoming a candidate. Um, but he announced that night that he was uh, no longer, he said, there's no longer space for me in Morena, um, and uh, that he was going to uh, potentially uh, run for president uh, without this party. So uh, very interesting development. Claudia Sheinbaum will, of course, be running against right-wing candidate Xochitl Galvez. She is the um, candidate for the right-wing opposition alliance, Frente Amplio por México, the broad front for Mexico. This is composed of the two ruling class parties, PRI and PAN, who have ruled over Mexico for decades. Um, the election of Andres Manuel López Obrador uh, in 2018 was actually breaking with the long tradition of these two parties ruling over the country. And as we know, uh, the fourth transformation, which was brought forward by AMLO during his presidency, which uh, had a massive impact on the population of Mexico, uh, the indexes, for example, of extreme poverty and of poverty in the country have, have decreased uh, importantly. Uh, the Mexican peso has gained strength. Um, uh, uh, as opposed to the dollar. Um, there have been a number, there's been a, a raise in minimum wage for people across the country. So these are really important advancements that have taken place through this fourth transformation of Mexico. And of course, the right wing, uh, very much used to having control over the country, uh, being able to take uh, from the state and do all sorts of other things, have uh, impunity for corruption, impunity for human rights violations has not been so happy with uh, this government. And so it is going to be a very, very intense race in 2024. Again, Claudia Sheinbaum, Dr. Claudia Sheinbaum facing off against Xochitl Galvez, 
uh, in these upcoming elections. And our next story is from Guatemala, where recently Bernardo Arevalo was elected as president. But we're definitely in a weird situation as this president-elect just a week ago warned that there was an ongoing coup against his victory. And now this is not something new. There have been a lot of attacks, political attacks against his party over the years. And this definitely does not bode well for democracy in Guatemala. We go back to Zoe for more details. So on August 20th, uh, Guatemala held the second round of its presidential elections. Um, and Bernardo Arevalo of the center-left uh, Semilla movement had actually won the second round of presidential elections. This was a historic victory. Um, again, this is uh, he faced off against Sandra Torres, who's from the National Unity of Hope Party, um, a center-right party. Uh, they both had already defeated the traditional ruling parties in Guatemala in the first round of the elections. But of course, Bernardo Arevalo ran and is running with a sort of progressive platform, an anti-corruption platform, and really breaking with traditional politics that have ruled in Guatemala for the past several decades. Um, very important to note that throughout this whole electoral process, as we've covered on People's Dispatch, there had been numerous irregularities. There had been an attempt to, um, to bar certain candidates from participating, um, to not only from the left, but also from uh, other other sectors. Uh, these had been in successful in some cases. And for example, even Arevalo's own party, the Movimiento Semilla, uh, had also faced uh, judicial repression. Um, they had there had been a back and forth between the courts um, that the the party had been barred. It had had their uh, legal representative suspended, um, even following the first round of the 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 elections and. Uh, following the victory of Arevalo, once again, the party was barred, um, actions taken against it. Again, there had been a back and forth with the court, the constitutional court ruling that this was illegal, um, the, the Supreme Electoral Tribunal also taking actions. Uh, and this is sort of taking, this has uh, raised the alarm bells across Guatemala, but also across the world um, in terms of what is what is the motivation, what's behind all of these actions in an attempt to kind of bar the party in an attempt to make sure that Arevalo does not actually uh, get sworn in. Um, again, he won the elections um, on August 20th, but for example, Sandra Torres has still refused uh, to actually accept his victory um, most recently this week, Luis Almagro, the Secretary General of the Organization of the American States, which, as we know, a historic instrument of U.S. imperialism in the region, actually visited Guatemala uh, because of concerns over the results in this electoral process. Um, because, uh, for example, Torres is not recognizing the results. Um, and he met with both parties in an attempt to kind of bridge this dialogue. Um, there's already been manifestations from even uh, governments of the global north in recognizing Arevalo's victory and saying that his victory should be protected and that his rights should be protected. Um, it is, again, a very tenuous situation. Sandra Torres uh, refuses to back down, continues to allege that fraud took place, uh, and continues to demand that there be a recount um, and that uh, her essentially demanding that she be declared uh, victorious in these elections. Um, Arevalo has requested, for example, um, protective measures from the Inter-American Human Rights Commission. Um, there has been a lot of back and forth regarding uh, this. And uh, there have even been rumors of death threats made against him and members of the Semilla Party. So it's a very tense situation. And of course, uh, it hopefully will be resolved without uh, any escalation in any of these threats. Um, and it will definitely be developing over the next couple of days. Um, in terms of what is going to be the response to the right wing sectors, again, many uh, governments in the region have already recognized his victory. Um, and so it's really just pending on the Guatemalan authorities to kind of back off of this repression against the party, against him, and uh, really respect the rule of law and the will of the people. And that's all we have time for in today's episode. Do keep watching future episodes of Daily Debrief on People's Dispatch. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button.